Good morning and welcome to our daily devotions on the Doncaster Methodist Circuit YouTube channel. It's good to be with you again today as we find ourselves on our third visit to Matthew 13 and the parable of the wheat and the weeds. But before we pay that third visit, a short prayer. So let us pray. Lord, I confess to you this morning that I'm not very patient with the weeds in my life. I try to yank them out without thinking of any harm that they that may cause to me or to others. Sometimes I'm so frightened that those tangles will overcome and they'll overcome me that I try to ignore them, pretending they're not there. Please forgive me, Lord, and help me to trust you to show me your way. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we share again in this passage from Matthew 13. This time we're just going to read the parable. We're not going to once again read the interpretation. And the parable itself is in verses 24 to 30. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed seed amongst the wheat uh, and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Thanks be to God for his holy word. Amen. You know, when you look around the world today, there seem to be so many people, don't there, that are anti-something or, or other. They're anti-this, they're anti-that, they're anti-the other. And they oppose things so passionately. They can't rest until the thing that they are anti, the thing that they are against, the thing that they are, they are opposing is eradicated from the world. So they do their marches, they walk around with banners, they have sit-in protests, and sometimes, of course, uh, they resort, very sadly, to violence. But so many people seem to be anti, very good at uh, opposing things. And of course, sometimes we're very just cause. One of the things I was reading this week was, for all those people who are good at simply opposing, are they also as good at proposing, making a, a proposition instead of simply just simply being in opposition? One of the examples that this person gave was, for example, uh, a campaign group that was against the erecting of a mobile phone mast near to a town. And they set up a, a group to be anti the mast, ban the mast or the banners or the marches or the protests. But one thing that they didn't consider was that part of the profits that were going to be made from the erecting of the phone mast would go to support after-school clubs, which would help working parents. So if they managed to succeed in their opposition to the phone mast, all that help for the working parents uh, would no longer be available. What the writer was saying was, rather than just simply being in opposition, why didn't they make a proposition? Why didn't they think of another way of helping the parents and the after-school clubs that perhaps would therefore have made the erection of the phone mask less necessary because they'd done something constructive 
uh, to help the parents themselves. They'd actually given it some thought. And he was saying that it's the easiest thing in the world sometimes to oppose something. It's more difficult to actually sit down and make a plan as to how you can do something helpful and fruitful. It's so easy to deconstruct sometimes. It takes more imagination, more thought, sometimes actually more commitment to work to be constructive. The servants in our story today, they were certainly anti the weeds and they couldn't rest till all those weeds had been eradicated. And when you think what Jesus says the weeds represent, again, you, you can't blame them for having just cause in some ways. But did you notice that the master actually proposes rather than simply opposes? He proposes something more constructive because he's actually thinking about the long-term welfare of the wheat. Our God is always like this. Paul would write to the Romans and say, so while we were still his enemies, that Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't simply oppose us because we were his enemies. He was the one who did something constructive. And as Paul would write in another letter, he would be in Christ reconciling the world to himself. When Jesus dies on the cross, when he cries, forgive them, Father, that's God not only proposing a constructive way out of a dreadful situation for humanity, but actually having the commitment, the self-giving love to do something about it. So during this week, if we find ourselves being up in arms, a bit hot under the collar, uh, being anti this, anti that, anti the other. Might we just want to stop ourselves in our tracks and think, oh, that have been him. I, I may be right in the way I'm thinking, but rather than just opposing, I wonder if I could just sit down and pray about this and come up with a way of proposing something constructive, something helpful, something fruitful, rather than just being anti, perhaps I could be pro, whatever it is that needs just a bit extra help, a bit of support, a bit of love. So as we're drawing to a close today, let's join together in our prayers. So let us pray. Loving God, we pray for your world, so imperfect and yet so rich and so diverse. We pray for those places where humanitarian aid is being distributed amid violence, fear and power struggles. For volunteers, medical staff, peacekeepers, reporters, and all who risk their lives to help others. We remember those who continue to be affected by the attack at the maternity hospital in Iraq, for the people of Yemen and Syria. We pray too for those places where landmines still lay in the crops of fields in villages, in places where children and communities live and work and go to school. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for discernment and wisdom around the use of social media. We give thanks for those who use it for good, to fundraise, to highlight injustice, to share good news and to keep in touch with family and friends. But we also pray for protection from and for a change of heart for those who use it to incite hatred, to bully and abuse those who are predatory and those who initiate financial fraud and scams. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for our relationship with creation and we give thanks for birds and wildlife 
and for those green spaces that inspire and nurture us. But we pray also for those who live in places devoid of colour, for all caged by their surroundings. We pray for an end to practices that are cruel and inhumane. And we pray for the welfare of all animals and creatures and for wisdom in our stewardship of the earth. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for the family of the nations, for our own families and for our church family. Where there is division, bring reconciliation. Where there is mistrust, bring healing. Where there is opportunity, bring courage. Where there is a shared dream, bring joy. Where there is discouragement, bring hope. And amid all the muddle of the best and the worst of humanity, bring your grace, your love and your truth. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Loving God, hear our prayer. Amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen.